So, you know, internships are, are a little bit short. Sure, experience. they're shorter in time. Co-op provides you a much longer uh, time to experience a professional environment in company. What I find is that, and of course, the co-op students are paid well, so they can, you know, live wherever they are comfortably and focus on their work experience. Uh, what we find is that when students come back from co-ops, they have this, uh, you know, renewed confidence about their abilities. From the Curtis R. Priam Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center, MPACT, at the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, I'm your host, Dr. John Wexler, Vice President for Enrollment Management, Rensselaer, and this is Crashing the Faculty Lounge. Our guest today is Dr. Shekhar Gardi, Dean of the Great School of Engineering. He's also the Elaine and Jack Parker Chaired Professor in the Howard P. Eiserman Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering. Dean Gardy has published over 100 papers in leading scientific journals. Dean Gardy was elected fellow of the American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineering and the American Association of Advanced Science. Today, the School of Engineering under Dean Gardy's leadership has garnered over $60 million a year in research. And you may not know this, but Dean Gardy is one of the leaders of the Molecularium Project on campus. Dean Gardy, Shekhar, welcome. Thank you for letting me crash the faculty lounge and thank you for your time today. Dr. Wexler, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so excited. There's so many great things taking place at Rensselaer and in particular, the School of Engineering. But one of the things that we're most excited about on campus and it's kind of got a buzz, especially with our incoming freshmen for next year is our new aerospace engineering major for undergraduates. Can you tell me how the major came to be created? Sure, John. So first of all, the timing is just right. This is the 200th anniversary of RPI. Um, you know, when I was a kid, if you asked many uh, kids in my class, what do you want to be when you grow up? They'll say astronaut, or many of them will say astronaut, right? Space is just fascinating. Um, if you look around in the world, there's been a resurgence of interest in space. Private companies, NASA, uh, international um, you know, um, organizations are sending rockets in space. Um, there is also a, a renewed fascination with the moon. Mm -hmm. Not so much, you know, whether we can get to the moon, but can we set up a, a base at the moon or a colony at the moon? Sure. And that could serve as a platform for, I don't know, going to, going to Mars or uh, deep space. Um, if I may add, you know, sure. closer to Earth, uh, there's also a revolution going on. Uh, in what are called uh, LEOs, the Low Earth Orbit Satellites. Okay. And they have eyes looking at, back at Earth. And they are monitoring, you know, uh, deforestation or, you know, lakes and water bodies, economy and trade. And so we're getting a lot of interesting insights about our own planet um, uh, from work that is going on in space. A lot of capital being invested um, in these uh, technologies. And I think the most important thing is among our students at RPI, sure. uh, interest in space is just uh, you know through the roof. They they really want to uh, you know work in space, and so I think all the factors came together. Associate Dean Kurt Anderson, who is a legendary professor sure. in our uh, aerospace uh, uh, engineering program, he would argue that it was long due, and so that's why we launched the aerospace uh, engineering major. Yeah, that's great. Um, what will students gain by majoring in this, um, in the aerospace engineering major? And can you explain what the difference is between aerospace engineering and aeronautical engineering, which we've had for years at Rensselaer? Sure, John. I think that's a, that's a great question. So when you think of aero, you know, as a word, um, you think of three main disciplines. So fixed wing, the kinds mm -hmm. of aircraft that we travel in, um, rotorcrafts or helicopters or drones. Um, and then space. These are the three disciplines that come under the broad heading of aero. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, you know, fixed wing and rotorcraft are known as aeronautical. Sure. And then space is aerospace, really. So that's kind of the main main difference. I would argue that the foundations are are the same. So when you are a student at RPI, either doing aeronautical or aerospace, you're going to do a lot of math, basic sciences, courses in um, engineering, fluid mechanics, heat transfer modeling and simulation, stuff like that. And that's kind of like sets the foundation of both aeronautical and aerospace engineering. But then in the space track, especially later in your curriculum, students are gonna learn about rockets and spaceships. You know, they'll have courses on space flight mechanics or space vehicle systems design, right? So really thinking about the space environment, you know, how do you propel the rocket, rocket so the area of space propulsion or um, something called um, space vehicle attitude. Like you want to 
you want to go where you want to go. And so sure. how do you adjust the direction? How do you change the direction? How do you move? And all of that sort of autonomy, communication, navigation, control of spacecraft is specialized for the for the space track. And in aerospace engineering, you know, you're going to learn about all of those kinds of things, uh, really. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, Rensselaer's had a long existing relationship with NASA. Can mm-hmm. you kind of talk about, educate, you know, some of our audience may not be aware of everything that's gone on from George Lowe to today, and where is that relationship today, not only with NASA, but play companies like SpaceX? Sure, sure, sure. I think, uh, you know, there's a, there's a long and rich history uh, of RPI and NASA, you know, relationships and collaborations. You mentioned um, the legendary George Lowe. George Lowe was a, um, uh, an alum of RPI, yep. got his uh, aeronautical engineering degree in 1948, um, went to work for industry, but came back immediately to get his master's degree and mm-hmm. got his MS in 1950s. Um, and then, um, you know, worked as a chief um, uh, chief of manned space flight at what is now known as the Johnson Space Center in Houston, mm-hmm. JSC. And, uh, you know, he was really the man responsible for putting man on the moon um, as part of the Apollo project. He was really chief of uh, man um, right. s- space flight of that project. Um, we were lucky to have him back at RPI to lead uh, as the president of RPI. Yeah. You know, there's there's other long relationships. So sure. three of RPI graduates have become astronauts. Right. One in Apollo mission, another one in Atlantis, and most recently, you might know and I met with him, yeah. G. Reed Wiseman, yes. who um, I think was in 2014. He was at the International Space Station. Right, he's class of '97. Yes, um, electrical engineer, and uh, we had a wonderful chat with him uh, in Impact, this facility where he was in ISS. Right. We were down here, and he had a, a wonderful Q and A with with our um, students. And he'll be leading the Artemis II. Um, launch, which is now scheduled for 2025, and he's that, captain of that. That's right. So he's the chief astronaut and commander uh, in chief of the Artemis II project, which will go and and uh, you know circle around the moon, and that's the farthest uh, humans would have traveled uh, would have traveled. And so we're we're absolutely excited. That's I don't great. know. I don't know, uh, John. If I if I can, uh, you know, absolutely. highlight some of the other relationships yeah, today. Absolutely. Like what's, what's, no, absolutely. That's <laughs> why we're here. So, what's going on with NASA today? Right. There's a lot of really exciting research projects. So, in our chemical and biological engineering, uh, Professor Joel Plosky, who is the head of the department, working with uh, Pete Weiner, has for the last two decades has sent experiments in space learning about how fluids move around in space and microgravity so that on Earth we can use that understanding to cool our computer chips faster. Um, In our biomedical engineering, um, Professor Liz Blaber Mm -hmm. has sent um, biological experiments in space trying to understand um, accelerated aging in space environments. And she's learning a lot from that so that on Earth maybe we can slow uh, the process process of aging. Um, In our... um, Mechanical and aerospace, uh, Amir Hirsa, Professor Amir Hirsa has developed a really cool experiment. You can have droplets in space, you can uh, shear their surfaces mm-hmm. and study what molecules really do at surfaces. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, really cool things going on today. Wow, that's um, great. With NASA. And then I want to give a plug for one more alum, sure. uh, Dr. Balram, who has a master's mm-hmm. and PhD from our electrical engineering. And he really was the originator and then the chief engineer of the Ingenuity project. So you might know NASA sent a rover and a, yeah. a, a spacecraft on Mars. Sure. And there was a, a, a drone of, as part of that mission called Ingenuity. Okay. And it flew, I don't know, it made many, many tens of flights uh, until very recently. And, and Dr. Balram was the chief of that, that idea, really. So cool, lots of cool things going on with NASA. That's great. Yeah. The School of Engineering is known for having students take part in internships and co-ops. Can you talk about what opportunities will be for aerospace majors, but then what you've seen change for the opportunities for all engineering students, you know, both, you know, all around the country and around the world, when students at the undergrad level have opportunities to do unique experiences through our ARCH program or outside of ARCH? Sure, sure, John. I think this is a great question. So, um, you know, as... um our, our economy um, you know, grows, there's increased reliance on uh, advance of technology. So STEM majors are obviously in very high demand. Uh, thanks to the ARCH initiative at RPI, we are requiring every one of the gra- uh, students at RPI, whether they're humanists mm-hmm. or architects or an engineer, 
to uh, get an external experience, co-op, internship, independent study, and so on. And so as a result mm -hmm. in engineering, there's been um, you know, significant growth in co-ops and internship opportunities. If you're in space or aerospace, then you can imagine going to NASA, either uh, Johnson Space Center or um, Jet Propulsion Lab, Goddard, or you could work for um, you know Lockheed Martin mm -hmm. or Boeing or SpaceX and other companies, you know, sure. United Launch Alliance. So really a, a large uh, you know set of opportunities are opening up for our students who, who want to do these. Yeah, and at the co-op yeah. level, they can be compensated. I mean, at a very high level. Um, you know, I've had students tell me for a 12 to 18 month experience, they could get 32 to 40 thousand dollars plus housing, depending where they're going. And I think, you know, it's not, it is not always about the money, but the opportunity, but the combination provides a very unique, great opportunity that um, for the students. Yeah. So, you know, internships are, are a little bit short. Sure. Experience. They're shorter in time. Co-op provides you a much longer uh, time to experience a professional environment in company. Right. What I find is that, and of course, the co-op students are paid well. Sure. So they can, you know, live wherever they are comfortably sure. and focus on their work experience. Uh, what we find is that when students come back from co-ops, mm -hmm. they have this, uh, you know, renewed confidence about their abilities. That's great. You know, when you're at RPI, you're working with very, very bright people. Sure. And um, you sort of wonder sometimes, yeah, am I bright enough? Can I do this? Right. And then when you go into a, a professional environment where you might be working with students from other universities, sure. students come back and say, Dean Gardy, you know, I was with somebody from MIT and Stanford and you know, I held my own. I was That's as great. good as them. It was, yeah. So I think it's a great, uh, great experience. That's great. As you can hear, there are a lot of great things taking place at Rensselaer. Rensselaer is located in Troy, New York, and our admissions office is open six days a week for visits. We'd love to have you come and visit and experience all this for yourself. To do so, you can go to go.rpi.edu backslash visit. To register to come to campus for a visit, go.rpi.edu backslash visit. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you back next time as we continue our conversation with Dean Shekhar-Gardy. Until then, I'm John Wexler, and this is Crashing the Faculty Lounge.